Before this video starts, I want it to be known that it wasn't the original idea of the video, so I'm cutting out a lot of the early stuff. But you can enjoy this clip of me finding a spider on my monitor, trying to get something to kill it, falling over, and just generally being a meme. So enjoy! If we can make this work. There is a spider on my monitor. Okay. We're going to deal with this travesty. Oh my god, that thing is scary looking. All right, one moment. Going to murder this spider very quickly. Damn, that a nasty boy. Oh! Ah! I forgot that my green screen was on the ground. Let's redesign this. <clears throat> I want to look at the sensors. So this sparks when there's a nearby particle with a greater temperature than itself. Which is cool. It's very helpful. Um, so if you have that, I'm not 100% sure how pistons and frame work. But I think it's time for me to learn. I believe using P-Silicon with Piston will push in the direction that it uh, got sparked. I could be wrong, but that's why we're going to test. Let's just go ahead and get a piece of gold in front of it. Interesting. Must be at least two blocks long. Oh. I see. Is that our problem? <clears throat> yes. And then the interesting thing is if you spark it with anything other than P silicon, it retracts. I put some insulation here, though. Ah! There we go. So this is kind of the smallest... I'm sure you can actually make it smaller than this. But this works. So, what you do is you use frame if you want to be fancy. And if you're using frame, I believe you can move a lot of stuff at once. I'm not quite sure the... Okay, so if I did that, and then I had like titanium, how far does frame hold? Pretty far, actually. So if we had this, and then we had a, <clears throat> we had a pipe of some sort, like this, We had this, and then we had insulation. Would that push the entire thing? Would it pull the entire thing back? Very interesting. And just for sake of speed, we go ahead and just manually heat that up. This water is nice and, and warm, but we can cool it down, because all we have to do is power this. Now the titanium is allowing the cooling ability to come through and freeze it. 
But now we can click this to stop cooling it. Or we can start cooling it again. Or we can stop cooling it again. This is a temperature control system. And we can set this up to cool it when it heats up. How do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and get a sensor. If we get this temperature sensor, and we put it in the water here, right? We can make it so that if the temperature is greater than, say, 200 degrees, it'll kick the cooling on. Okay, good. So we'll use this knot. And we will go back to our personal. Nihonium reactor we were just working on. Okay, and that means that this should pretty much... Okay, we need a little bit more space here now. So this should pretty much always be outputting here to the close instruction. Unless this is getting power. All right, that is the hope at least. So, let's see if it works. If we heat this up, and it starts to get over the specific temperature. It is not working. This is going, but it's not turning it off. Is it because of this? Is it something I did? Uh oh. What is going on? If this is sparked, this should stop, but it's not. Is it because I changed it from metal? Was that metal before? Oh shoot, yeah. It has to be metal. I don't quite understand why. But that's working now. Let's try this again. <clears throat> okay. And we'll use something that uh, doesn't get quite as... The, the issue with water is that it, uh, it boils. I prefer something that doesn't boil. Oh, actually, we could use deuterium. Because that would also have the added benefit that uh, it actually gets larger as it gets hotter. Which means it would automatically retract from the cold if it got cold. And look at that. When it gets hot, it opens up that cooling system. It cools it. And then it shuts it again. 
Okay, now the question is, is a system this simple able to cool down Nihonium? This is a pretty simple system. Let's go ahead and stick a heat exchanger onto here and put a very small amount of Nihonium on the end. It is already emitting quite a bit of heat. But it's stable, so let's add a second one. And it's still stable. Let's add a third. And a fourth. And dare I say we add a fifth. This is now at a very high temperature, which should be passing on to the water over here. Now this will become a runaway uh, reaction if we leave it too long, but hopefully this is going to snap into place and the emergency cooling system turned on for a second. Let me keep our eyes on that center piece of a Nihonium. If I can actually there we go. There it is, 380, and then it goes up a little bit, but then it gets knocked back down again. This is a stable Nihonium reactor. Every time it gets too hot, it opens up the cooling chamber, and the cooling chamber keeps it nice and cold. We can go ahead and then use the now very stable 300 degree temperature to actually run some sort of uh, power plant on the other end. Which is just going to be a very classic design here. I'm not going for art points. <laughs> Don't at me. There we go. We can put some clone. <coughs> now, the thing that makes this not just your average reactor is obviously the fact that it can very easily react to an overheating situation. Even if we increase the amount of Nihonium to uh, be a little bit scary, it should still be able to handle it. Okay, maybe not. Maybe there's not quite enough cooling. Okay, yeah. As you can see, it is actually unable to slow this down. It's just too much Nihonium. So, what we'll do is we will change this a little bit. Maybe now, yes. Now it's able to cool it down. The big idea is though that this is a huge safety feature that none of my other reactors have ever had. This emergency stopping system is very important. Uh, any proper reactor should have a cooling system like it. And here we go. We have this right here, which is our proper reactor, which is keeping a very, very steady 100 degrees. It's actually almost perfect. Because this over here is ensuring that it does not get too hot. And boom, we have tamed the most dangerous material in the powder toy. Now this may not seem like a big thing, but considering it's the first time that I've successfully done something like this, it's actually pretty damn awesome. This gives me a lot of ideas for the future. So here it is. This is the first version of my Nihonium battery, which doesn't look at all like a battery, I'm going to be honest. Um, so we're not going to call it that. We're going we're gonna to call it 
a stable Nihonium reactor. Because it's using principles of reactor design that are actually quite good. Like, don't... Don't die. That's a good one. It's a good start. Yeah, it's... It is stable. We could actually add more cooling to this, give it a little bit more capability to cool down faster, and it would be able to handle a larger amount of Nihonium. Um, and that wouldn't even be very challenging to do. You just, uh, honestly, just put a bulb on the top of here. And use a whole lot more freeze powder. If this is colder, it'll be able to push a whole lot more uh, thermal energy away. Or pull a whole lot more thermal energy in, because the heat goes to the cold. And I think with that additional amount of cooling ability, we should be able to increase the amount of Nihonium. I think. We'll see. Is it able to keep- Yes! It is! Look at that! That is crazy! It is actually holding the Nihonium steady. Barely, though. Wow. Uh-oh, it's- it's- it's going up. It's going up. Okay, it's- it's not quite enough coolant. It's not quite enough coolant. We'll expand it further. This is very cool, though. I get it cool because we're f we're freezing things. No, but really, it's it's kind of a uh, it's really awesome when you figure something out like this in uh, the powder toy. It really does feel great to design something, especially something automated. Just seeing it function is a lot of fun. There we go. Ugh, I hate this song. <laughs> Alright, using the, uh, very simple, very simple tools of the powder toy, we have managed to make a stable Nihonium reactor. Me looking at the temperature actually going a little bit higher than I would have liked. But it's, it's stable, that's the thing. It is, it is actually holding its own. I don't know what's going on over here. Rhyme? Oh, is this salt water? No, it's just normal water. Why is there a rhyme building up on the outside? E. Let's uh, put a little bit of defense against the water which is flying out. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, it's all, uh, it works. I'm very proud of this. Uh, control rod behavior is extremely important because I'm going to start designing very, uh, far more technical systems because I feel like that's higher quality saves or something I need to do. So thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed learning with me and I will see you all next time. Peace out. Thank you all for watching. Now that we can make moving objects, let me know down in the com- What was that? Down in- Can I even speak? Down in the comments below, let me know what you want to see me make next. And, uh, end credits gang, thank you for sticking around, thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe as well. And share the channel. It helps me out, it helps you out, it makes you feel like a good person, you know? Love you all.